Hi everyone, this is the first in our new um, kind of series of videos uh, in conversation with other people. So it's not just us on this one. Um, and joining us today, we have got Mark Russell. So Mark, over to you. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do. That sounded a bit like a blind date, but <laughs> let's just go with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as I said before, before we start recording, I don't know if I should be worried. Well, honoured that I'm the first person on this, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, myself, Mark, um, a lad from inner city Manchester. Um, got involved in sport in my mid-teens, uh, sport being Thai boxing. Thai box, I was, was I a bit of a wild lad? I was almost a wild lad as such, but um, needed to channel my energies in the right way, I suppose. And um, the martial arts did that for me. Um, what made gave, you do martial arts, Mark? Uh, what made me get into martial arts? Yeah. Um, well, I've been doing martial arts since I was about four years old. Um, my uncle used to teach Kung Fu, which in, my, in that era, everyone wanted to be Bruce Lee. Everyone wanted to wear a white suit and be Bruce Lee, basically. <laughs> a lot of people these days don't know who Bruce Lee is, which is, which is, a, is a shame, but a hey -oh. Um And then from there, I was, as a young kid, you never sort of really consistent. So I was dabbled in that of it for quite a long while. Um, and I went back into it when I was about 16 or 17. Um, and a friend of mine who went with me, his brother came to watch and he was a current British Thai boxing champion. And he saw it and went, well, Kung Fu, yeah, come and see my martial art, come and see what it's all about. And I tried Thai boxing, that was it for me. That was like hooked, um, never stopped. So I've never stopped, even, even through injury, I've still trained basically. Um, and then martial art then gave me a bit of a, a better insight into myself, um, what could achieve, what could be achieved through hard work. And that sort of mindset I, I developed through martial arts I applied for everything in life basically you now and that's how I got to where I am now really. So just just on the the kickboxing um, side of things uh, I've read on the internet that you are currently the world heavyweight champion three times is that right? Uh, heavyweight three times cruiserweight once yeah so I'll not currently unfortunately, unfortunately it's former now it's former now unfortunately yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but yes yeah I was four times world champion. So in terms of, um, picked up on a little bit about what you said about applying martial arts throughout your life. And um, obviously Simon's dabbled a bit in the time that we've been together. And I don't know that much about martial arts, but one of the things that I have picked up is the fact that people talk a lot about the discipline that you get from mm -hmm. martial arts. Is that the sort of thing that you're referring to in terms of how you apply it through your life? Most definitely, most definitely. The thing is, as I say, I, I, in school, um, I was in all top sets, but I remember it's crazy certain things you, you never forget. I remember when I had to, in our day, it was a case you had to go in school to pick your results up. I don't know the same now, I'm not sure. And um, the teacher was waiting for me. He gave me his books, he went, Mark, you've not achieved that, you should have done. I was like, and it stuck in my mind, I don't know why it stuck in my mind. It stuck in my mind, he said, you should have achieved more. You should have achieved more. And I went away and I thought, wow. And then I realized that ultimately, I just didn't apply myself properly. Um, and as I've worked through the ranks, because I say I was initially I won the British title and the European title, and I became a world champion. Um, I've realised that hard work pays off, and um, and focus, hard work, focus, discipline, structure, etc. All those sort of my, all that mindset um, is what I apply now into everything I do, regards to my my the professional uh, life or even at home to a certain degree as well. And I realised that um, structure and that sort of thing is what gets you. Um, Get your progress really. Yeah, because one of the things we haven't mentioned, you've you, we've talked about the the championships that you, that you've won in um, Thai boxing. So you've obviously you've got to the top of your game in that respect. But you're also a really successful businessman, and like us, you've got a couple of businesses, haven't you? So yeah, yeah. tell everyone a little bit about what you're doing now, because we one of the things we love about you is the um, the apparent conflict between a couple of your businesses that actually I think are genius. They work so well together. So tell everyone about that. Uh, well, I, um, well, obviously the, the natural progression for martial arts is it's going to coaching. Um, if you're passionate about sports and um, which I am, and the things it did for me, I've been to places I never would have envisaged going to. Um, or I've been in some basic food competing. I've been all over the world, barring Australia and uh, New Zealand. I was meant to go and I broke a rib on 14 training, so I didn't manage to go there. Whatever, I've been to all continents, etc. And I thought, well, you know, if I can pass it on to some of the kids, some of these inner city kids, and they get the same opportunity, well, great. So I went to teaching, um, uh, which I really enjoyed doing and seeing people in progress. And sometimes I work with a lot of vulnerable kids who 
trying to apply the right sort of like mindset into, their, into them and uh, um, discipline. Hopefully, I'll get well, not just got feedback, but some of them argue me feedback in regards to how I'm, I've changed their life. Really, I don't intend to say I'm, I'm Buddha or whatever, but I'd like to think if I'm giving them an opportunity which I've had, well, great because there are there's many kids who I grew up with. Unfortunately, um, everyone makes everyone makes their own choice in life, and uh, some of the guys are behind bars, some of the guys are dead, um, not through natural causes, unfortunately. But that's the choice you make. Um, I'm still friends with a lot of those guys because hey, it's not okay. There's no reason why we're not still mates. But ultimately, they made a choice. And I've made a choice. Um, but I want to try and give these guys an opportunity to see what's out there, as opposed to just that in a city sort of natural progression. Unfortunately, this day and age, it's um, there's more out there. There's a bigger, it's a wider world. So, so yeah, teaching was is something I enjoyed doing. That's why I'm going to gym. But I also got involved in property a while ago. Um, no plug, but if you see Holmes and the Hammer, I was in the best episode ever, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I went to property, um, residential and commercial, and I had a commercial property in Sandbach, uh, which I was um, renting out. Unfortunately, tenants sometimes can be very frustrating indeed. Um, we didn't see eye to eye, they had to go. Um, and it was sat there for a while. And partner, my own missus, we used to go to a lot of food festivals. I don't know why, so I'm not really a big food person. I don't, I don't know what that's all about anyway. <laughs> but every time I went, we used to always see the pizza, the naturally sort of Neapolitan pizza was always sold out, always sold out. I thought, there's an opportunity here. There's an opportunity, so I've got a Best building. In the world. Hey, hey? Best yeah, for sure. In the world. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. It's come. So now, so people say, well, you've got a pizza, basically, you've got a pizza restaurant and you've got a gym. How does that work? And my, my, my comment is, it's a circle of life. You carb load, you work it off. You carb load, you work it off. It's, it's, all, it's what it's all about. You work for that treat at the end of the week, at the end of the week. It's all, it's all, it all works, in, it all works, all works. If you don't treat yourself, you become very boring indeed, that's for sure. Yeah, my, my problem is I spend a lot of time in your pizza restaurant and no time in your gym. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on that, we can work on that for sure. <laughs> so the other thing, how did you transition into um, being in a movie? Um, we just said it was luck. Um, to a certain degree, I'd say it was luck. Well, I think everyone, I'm not a big believer. Well, I'm saying luck, but I'm not a big believer. And I remember when I used to go to fights, I used to always go and see my mom and dad before they went. It was like in Rocky, where Rocky goes and sees a priest and he gives his cross and does a prayer for Rocky. I used to always go see my mom and dad before I went. And they always said to me, okay, Mark, yeah, good luck. I say, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, looks like all of it. It's how hard you work. I remember, I think it was, um, I think it's Gary Player. I think he got into, I think it was Gary Player. And I think a, a reporter interviewed him and said, Oh, Gary, you're very lucky today. And he said, yeah, he said, they're lucky. He said, yeah. And you know what I find? The harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it's all about. So, so ultimately, make your own look. So um, I'd always wanted to do some sort of television work. Um, I like talking. I'm a bit of a poser. Maybe so. I don't know. So, um, <laughs> so ultimately, it was a transition I had to make in some way, shape or form. And um, because of the level I got to, um, I was teaching somebody of who, I'd, who was fairly influential. He then became an executive producer on a movie and um, said, I want my fighter in this movie, basically. And it just went from there. And, um, and then initially I was brought in just to do a fight scene. And the way it transpired was a lad who was doing the part I originally, I, was, I did in the end, he was, well, the story goes that he was arrested by the serious crime squad. And um, so his, his uh, demise was my, was my good luck, basically. So, um, and I jumped in and he said, well, do you feel apprehensive about it? I said, well, no. I said, ultimately, in a fight, if you make a mistake in a fight, you're getting carried out. In a film, you make a mistake in a film, cut, retake, go again. It's like, well, okay. So um, it was all good fun. All good fun. No, I, lo I love that because we talk um, a lot about the concept of luck. We've had people telling us we've been lucky in our journey. And I think there is, a, like you say, a lot of it is kind of down to, I think that there's, a difference between being lucky and just putting yourself in the right place at the right time for opportunities mm -hmm. and that's certainly how we feel about our journey I, th I think that's exactly the same as what you've just described it, it's mm -hmm. if you're putting yourself out there mm -hmm. things fall into place which other people mm -hmm. might call luck but you know that you've actually done the work to get yourself into that place anyway mm -hmm. no for sure for, for sure because as I say I'm always trying to think of new ways of developing myself and improving myself etc cetera, etc cetera. And the thing is, the more skill set you have or the more things you are capable of doing, the more opportunities will arise. And they really will. Um, and, and I've seen, I mean, even in the film industry, for instance, 
yes, I got an agent straight after it and we went to Cannes, we went to New York, etc. Um, but I was, uh, it was a strange part of time in my life. Um, unfortunately, I was, uh, hey, I had an ex-wife we're going through difficulties, it is what it is. So to go up and down at a time, all the sort of um, interviews, so to speak, were going down in London. It's a case of now, could I go down to London all the time? And I was thinking, well, really? Um, I was going to acting classes, as you do, so I thought, okay, I've got to make myself prepared for opportunities. But you talk to people in the classes and I say to them, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm an actor. Oh, that's great. What have you been in? Nothing yet. <laughs> no, you're not an actor. Then. No, you're not an actor. Get, get real, folks. Get real. Come on. What's paying your bills? Um, so that sort, of, that sort of culture circle, it was a case of, do I, if I, if I explore it more, I'd either have to move to, move to London at the time or constantly go for those sort of screen tests. And because I was just about to start a young family, it wasn't, it wasn't a risk. I, everything's a calculated risk for me. And it was a case of about to weigh the pros and cons. I say, well, the pros, yeah, okay, you may get there, you may not. But ultimately, I'd, I'd left, I'm an older parent. Um, and in um, case of now, I've done what I did for myself, so to speak, in a certain degree anyway. It's a case of, do I still maintain? Because to be a sportsman, you have to be selfish. And anybody who says different line, um, you've got to be selfish, you've got to be very self-centered to get where you want to go. And in case of, did I want to continue doing that in the sort of acting world, or I don't want to give time to my kids? It's a case of, it's time to give time to my kids, really. So, um, and that's why I stepped back from that and thought, okay, what can I do? And I started doing, um, then I went to the uni. I did another course in uni, basically, went from there. Oh, cool. So you did a lot of, um, obviously you've done a lot of traveling and we, we enjoy traveling. We enjoy going on holiday and things like that. Where was your, what's your most favorite place that you've been to? Um, it's difficult. Asia, I love. I love Asia. Um, I didn't go to Thailand until I was about, considering I've been in the sport since I was 17, I didn't get to Thailand until probably my mid so late twenties, maybe May late twenties, early thirties. That first time I went to Thailand, I loved it. The people, the culture, loved it. Uh, Japan, the same thing. So I'm just still over in Asia. Um, the, the people in Japan are amazing. The when I first went to Thai boxing um, and went there competing, you really they really opened my eyes to saying I've arrived. I really have arrived, basically. Um, can you see my little? Oh. They, <laughs> And then, <laughs> oh, he wants to steam my limelight. He wants to steam my limelight. Yeah. Give me some out, Mister. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell you, he just. Yeah. Is, <laughs> Love it. When so, yeah. that from? <laughs> I tell you exactly. I know exactly, exactly, exactly. But um, my dad was from Barbados, and um, I've been to Barbados now three or four times. When I first went, I went with him. I went, we went as a family. Then I went on my own. Um, and I enjoyed it, but I, I always kind of, I always still stayed to Asia being a place for me. But I went to Barbados last year. Um, my missus uh, took me there for my 50th. I know it's hard to believe, but I went there last year. And um, I think because my dad, last year was my dad's 10th anniversary when he died. And going there this time, and going to a place where I knew he grew up, um, the beaches he played on, the places, the streets he walked, etc., etc., it was a lot more poignant with me. And it left a lot more, a bigger mark. And I realized, I'm thinking, this is part of me. And um, so for me, it's Barbados now. It has to be Barbados. Just because of the whole connection with myself to Barbados, Barbados has got to be the place for sure. Do you feel um, that this might be going a little bit deep now? I think Simon's going to get uncomfortable. Do you feel um, like a spiritual connection? I'm not necessarily talking about religion, but like you say, in terms of that being the birthplace of your dad, um, is is it that kind of feeling? Because I know, again, the connection with martial arts, there is a lot of um, exploration of that side of things, isn't there? There is for sure. Um, I will use my dad's thought process with regard to religion. My, I mean, my dad's a Caribbean background, so they are a very religious group, for sure. Um, his sister, my auntie, is very religious. I mean, she is a devout religious person. They, um, my, dad's, my dad's mindset was, um, ultimately, um, he doesn't, he'd like to believe there's something there, but he doesn't know. He said when, so, he said when somebody goes there and comes back and tells them what it's all about, <laughs> they, they, but he said, but he'd like to believe. Yeah. So um, do, I, do I pray? Yes, I do. Um, do I believe? I'd like to believe, but I don't know. So, but this, yeah, there was definitely a spiritual connection because it really did 
I said to say, walking down certain streets and realizing this is these are possible streets. My dad played them when he was a kid. It resonated with me for sure. Yeah. And um, and yeah, because obviously it was a case of he's no longer here. It made us feel closer to him because um, he still got a sister in Barbados as well. Who again we we'd sit and over a room, small room, um, and discuss what he did as a child and why he played, etc., etc. So it was great. It was great. We could be calling his memories was was brilliant, really good. Fantastic. Um, what do you think is your the biggest lesson that you've learned in life? Because obviously we've talked about these um, incredible achievements that you've made in in lots of different areas in in your life, but. I'm assuming there have been mistakes along the way. Most people experience mistakes. So what, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Well, first of all, I'd say I've never had a mistake in my life. Okay. I've learned lessons. I've learned yeah. lessons, but I've made no mistakes. So and I think that's the I think that's one lesson I've learned. I've learned basically a case of um, make sure I do apologize. Yeah. Sorry. Um, make sure that you try. Try and I mean, ultimately say uh, try. And if you fail, however, you, whatever you want to label it, um, you've got to try. I always, I've always, the old adage in boxing is um, that I think on the water foot with Marlon Brando, I could have been a contender. Well, you know, that doesn't work for me. Um, I remember when I started the, the Mark Thai boxing, as I say, the lad who I went with, his brother got me into it. There was three of us who started together. Um, the lad, his brother, he was a natural athlete. And that played for anything he applied himself to in sport, he's natural. Um, his cousin, he was very good indeed. Out of three of us, I was probably the less gifted. The less gifted out of three of us, but I was the most tenacious and ultimately probably the most hard, the hardest worker. The lad was naturally gifted. Unfortunately, he made the wrong choices. Um, cut a bullet in his leg, so he could uh, slow his uh, sporting life down. He, he's over in Spain, living in Spain. My other day, his cousin became the British champion uh, to train for a while with me for many years, but no, none of them achieved what I did in sport. And that was purely simply because I wasn't going to give up. Did I win my first world title opportunity? No. I think it was my third, I believe, when I got it. Um, but I knew I could do it. So it was a case of, for me, it's a case of, the lesson is never give up or at least make sure you give it your best try. And when you realize you can't do any more than that, you think, okay, it isn't for me. Well, I'm fine. Fine, I'll move on. But I've, I'm never going to say to myself, um, I didn't try, I could have tried harder. Well, then you're never, you're never going to know. And I'm never going to say to myself, I wonder what would happen if I've done this. Because again, you'd never know. So it's a case of give it a go, give it a go. I like that because, um, I mean, you know, my my go-to sport is uh, football. And mm -hmm. I, I think people talk a lot about this, um, you know, what, what trumps what? Is it all about talent or is it all about hard work? Mm -hmm. And I think it is one of those things where if you are naturally talented, but don't put any work in, you're not going to achieve as much as the person who possibly hasn't got that natural talent, but works their arse off all the time. And I think, you know, obviously you then get the likes of Ronaldo, who naturally gifted and absolutely works his arse off and, and get to those kind of heady heights. Mm. Um, but for me, it, it, I'm totally with you on that. Hard work all the time uh, mm. will, will get you there, regardless mm. of whether or not you've got that natural talent. For sure. No, because I think, I think the... Unfortunately, a lot of the people who are naturally talented waste the gifts. It's a gift and they waste them because they become complacent. They get them so far. But by the time they get to a certain level in their career, they've, because they're not used to that particular sort of work ethic, it's hard for them to change that mindset then. And by which point, Joe Bloggs, who's been working on his way, is in that mindset. He's working, he's going to surpass him. Yeah. And he can't catch up then. So it's, uh, and then the person naturally gifted becomes frustrated. I mean, you look at people like George, Babe, so about football, George, Best, yeah. Gaza. They're prime examples of guys who are naturally gifted and wasted it. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think football is is a really good example of that happening, especially in this country, because you do get the youngsters who get, um, you know, airdropped, parachuted into some of the big academies, premiership academies, mm -hmm. and get huge amounts of money thrown at them from a really young age with very little support on how to manage that. And you see them almost spiral from that point um and you know i'm, I'm a big Coralix fan and, and we've had a lot of our youngsters go on to top clubs and then not made it because um it, for exactly that reason it becomes i think the the drive to push hard when you're kind of dropped into this fairly cushy life mm. is kind of it, it dissipates doesn't it 
Well, you know, there's a saying, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was Lennox Lewis or, no, it was Marvin Hagler, I believe. Marvin Hagler said it's very hard to go out and run at four o'clock in the morning in pyjamas. Um, <laughs> <basically, laughs> <Yeah, I like. laughs> yeah, for sure. And, uh, and that's very true. I, and that's why I, they say when you become a champion, it's very hard to stay a champion. But the, the easy bit is becoming a champ. The hardest bit is maintaining that level. Because ultimately, you've got to think like a contender all the time. And if you don't think like a contender, someone's going to come and get you. And I've, I've always, I've always asked, everything I apply, I think, I've got to think, someone's coming for me. Someone's knocking on my door. Somebody wants what I want, what I have. And basically, how do I keep ahead of the game, basically? And, um, and that's why, yeah, I've always, so, I mean, even now, people say, well, you're still training hard, but you're training hard for. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's my focus, my center. So it keeps me, keeps my drive going, basically. Yeah, you did, you did post something on social media the other day with you doing the front squat, front splits. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still paying for it now, mind you. <laughs> not <that. laughs> No. Yeah, no, I mean, again. Someone always knocking on your door. Do you apply that in business as well? For sure. Oh, with, without a shadow of a doubt. Because, I mean, especially now, especially in these, these strange times, um, there's going to be a lot of businesses who are going to disappear, unfortunately. And, and I think it's a case of adapting. You're going to have to adapt. The life... The way I see it, um, life will not be the same. Life will not be the same for a long time. And even, even if we do, I mean, I'm, I'm, you try not to read everything or watch everything, but then again, in another instance, I'm watching Newsnight at midnight, thinking what, what he's saying, what's going on. Yeah. And um, until he find a vaccine anyway, that's going to change life totally. And that's, that's, what, 12 to 18 months away. Yeah. So you've got to adapt. If you don't adapt, you fail. You fall behind, basically. So you've got to think, okay, what do I do now? What's up, what's, what, what can I do to think about different avenues I can go down, really? So, yeah, for sure. Brilliant. Okay. Sorry, were you going to jump in now? I was just going to say, um, next question is just what, your, what is your favourite book that you've read or the one that you've taken most uh, influence from? Mm. Read, as you can see, my little, little lad running around. And I've got two of us as well, two little other regrets. Reading is a, is a luxury, which I get when I'm on holiday. Make, well, in fact, no, because when I went on my last one, I was reading it late at night when I'm in sleep because, hey, it's a very difficult thing to do. <laughs> um, so it depends on, I enjoy, I enjoy well, just for the sake of relaxing, I enjoy Patterson. James Patterson, I enjoy um, and the Alex Cross, when he puts Alex Cross, I like Alex Cross, etc. So I like Patterson books. But obviously, if you're in business, you have to read business books. Um, and I've also, I'm also involved in sort of psychology, so... Um, the Chimp Paradox. So yeah, Chimp yeah. Paradox um, has to be a, a book that really gives you an insight into how people think. Um, so that's one of the books I read. Uh, books have been recommended to me. There's one called Small Giants, which tells you about um, rather than going too big, it's a case of staying small, but making sure that small is perfect, basically. It's as close to perfect as possible. Um, yeah, that's a good to read. Me, that one. Uh, <laughs> small but you're perfect. always going to be small. <laughs> No, I, I've read I've read both of them, and I listened to Chimp Paradox because uh, I've got an Audible account, and I really struggled yeah. with it. I really struggled to get into it. I think I'm going to have to read it again because sure. everyone I speak to, and um, it's in business that that reads a lot, recommends yeah. that book, and it's highly highly rated. I'm going to have to probably get it yeah, and okay. probably actually physically read it because I, I concentrate more on it if, I, if I've got the book in my hand. Yeah, no, I think so. I think so. I, it definitely. As I say, it gives you, because sometimes it's hard to, especially if you're if you're a strong strong-minded person, sometimes it's very hard to see the other person's point of view, and um, yeah, <laughs> and the chimp, the chimp paradox gives you a bit more insight to how people think, and it, no, it de it was definitely something for me, definitely you can. I would suggest reading it. I would suggest reading it for sure, rather yeah. than listening to it. For sure. No, sure, sure. I'll have a I'll have a look through that. Okay, to finish off then, Mark, we've talked loads about, obviously, hard work, tenacity, determination, all those sorts of things. And, and you've, as we've said several times, got some amazing achievements in your life. What do you do to actually relax? Do you ever relax fully? Do you ever switch off? And if you do, what do you do? Um, that's, that is a difficult question because I don't, I, I'm always told off for not relaxing enough. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the thing is, you know, and I'm trying, especially now during this period, gives you a bit more thinking time. 
it, it makes you realize a bit more about what's important. And, um, and ultimately, the old, adage, the old adage I say to people now um, is, you never see someone on a deathbed say, I wish I'd worked harder. Never, they're never going to I wish I'd done this, but they're never going to say, I wish I worked harder. So you think, you know, um, how important is chasing that book, chasing whatever? I mean, is that important? Well, yeah, everybody, especially when you acquire a certain lifestyle, achieve certain things, um, you want to maintain them. But then you can, but then you also think, well, really, how important is it? Um, I know one of the questions you put to me was, what's my greatest achievement? They said, oh, what's your greatest achievement? You've got, I don't know, you've got an undergrad degree, you've got a master's degree, you've got titles, yada, 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 yada. I say, yeah, but all, at the end of the day, regarding the titles, I can watch those DVDs over and over again. They'll never change. They'll always be the same. Um, you get a qualification in, in, in uni, et cetera. Once it's there, it's there. But my kids, the kids are my biggest achievement in the fact that ultimately things that you get so much out of the kids is brilliant. But then people say, well, anybody can have kids. I say, so my biggest achievement for me is, is hopefully being reviewed as a good father. Hopefully the kids say to me, you've been a good dad. So that's my biggest achievement. I'm still achieving from that. I'm still working on that, basically. So I'll say to my kids, I'll talk to them, and I'll say, look, no one's perfect. Um, I will make mistakes. And if I do make a mistake, I'll admit that to you. But ultimately, um, hopefully, if I, I, I believe that uh, every generation should surpass the last. So my parents instilled into me hard work, right morals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what they instilled in me helped me to make the choices I have in life. Yes, I could have made it because yeah, you are going to get, I've had the question many times before I grew up, why did you not become a gangster? You're smart, you can fight. It's a perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, you know, um, I don't, the not- fact I can say, yeah, for sure, ultimately. I can see myself as a godfather. I can see it, but ultimately. No, the fact is, when someone knocks on my door, it's either pizza delivery or <laughs> someone else. It's not someone calling me, someone to take me away, basically. So that's hence why I made that choice. So you still the right things in me. But then my dad was a big, from the Caribbean, it's all about education. And my mom was from hard work. So therefore, I don't have to apply that and pass it on to my kids. And hopefully, what I, I'm, I'm setting a high benchmark for them. I'm setting a high benchmark for them. Um, and hopefully now they'll surpass what I'm doing. And, um, and that's... That's, that's that's my biggest achievement for sure for sure yeah i love that i love Excellent. that i think it's so true i think every parent wants their own children to do better than they did sure. um and uh yeah it, it's and i think that's one of the only situations in life where that's true because not many people want other people to better them but mm. it is what you want from your own kids isn't it mm-hmm. most definitely but again you know okay it's it's it is a hard thing when you say, do you want other people to better you? And it's, it's hard because ultimately, it's, it's when you see people, I don't know, as an example, you see people go down the road and they'll scratch a car because someone's got a car they haven't got. Uh, jealousy. And I'll admit, I think, that's a great car. How's he got a car? What's he doing? Think, and I'm trying to figure out, find out what his job is. Maybe that's a line of work I'm about to get into. I don't know. But um, I admire them. I set goals. I, I, I've always looked at people and thought, They've got where they are through hard work. They're doing this. How can I get to where they're going, basically? And I don't, I'm not jealous of them. I admire them. Um, And um, if they're working hard and honest about it, well, good luck to them. Good luck to them because if you're working hard, you deserve the accolades you do, you deserve the rewards, basically. So I would never, I would never, I would never, jealousy, I'm not jealous. No, I don't don't think I'm a jealous person. I'm just thinking, well, if they're doing it, I can do it. And I want to know how I can do it, basically. And just yeah, it. use it as motivation instead. For sure. Exactly, 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 exactly. Awesome. Yeah, so, so final question then. What's next? What's next for you? Are you setting up any new businesses? Any going for any new titles? <laughs> Ty, well, there's videos of Mike Tyson flying around. At 50 yeah. years old. You and I think, my, well, I've heard he's getting a million pound, a million pound to find. I'm thinking... You know what, Mike? I'll do three rounds of you. I, <laughs> rounds of you. I will do three rounds all day long, basically. So, um, but um, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. It really is. It's difficult because the, the industries I'm involved in, the leisure and hospitality, they're both probably the two of the hardest hit industries out there. Yeah. Um, and they will be different with regard to the leisure industry and gymnasium, social distancing, classes, etc., etc. They're going to change. They are going to change in a big way for a long time. So, um, Thinking of how I can adapt to that, we'll have to see. Um, the hospitality industry, the restaurant industry. Restaurants, again, I mean, I'm fortunate in the fact that, yes, the building's mine. 
Um, but it's a small restaurant. So will there be social distancing in that small restaurant? I don't know. Will it be a case of it change the format it's in now is it maintain that format for a while? We will see. Um, we will see. It didn't it's never done dominoes any harm. So we'll see. Um, but um it's it's adapting really is guys. Um so I don't know. I it's it's a difficult one because nobody knows. No, and anybody who says they do know, they're lying. <laughs> because if you watch the TV every day, the politicians are saying a different thing every single and they've got some of the biggest and best economic and business brains out there and they don't know. So yeah. um hey, we'll see. So we'll see. Oh, good good luck for the future anyway. I think yeah. I think one of the things that puts you ahead of the game is the fact that you're just you're just ready for it and open to whatever happens. And I think that's half the battle because I, I'm seeing so many people who are taking um, a really negative view and, and really contracting in on themselves. Yeah. And, and that just means that they're closing themselves off to whatever opportunities they, that do become available. And like you yeah. say, we might not know, but not knowing doesn't mean that you can't keep looking forward. No, for sure. And I think it's, uh, no, my, I think we're the best one in the world. Um, there's gonna be days when you're thinking, oh dear, oh dear, dear, dear me. What, what, where are we going, what are we gonna do? And um, yeah, if I if I say I didn't have a days that I think I'd be lying for sure. Um, but as I say, my my grounder, my re when I recalibrate myself is to go and do some training. Um, when I train, it recalibrates myself, gets me focused again, and gets me thinking. Okay, okay, Mark, let's think outside the box. Let's think outside the box. Think, okay, what is out there? What will happen? Um, even to the point where I was looking the other day on old when the last recession. How do we come out the last recession? What did we do? What thrived in that last recession? Things like that, trying to work, these patterns, I look at the Spanish flu, that happened in whenever, but what happened, what came out from there, basically? Um, so it's, 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 there's, a, there's always going to be a pattern, there's always going to be a repeat, it's like fashion. Fashion will always, it's cyclical, it'll always come out at some point, things will happen again, um, it's case of, okay, what's out there? And just go from there, really. No, well, right. thanks for your time, and if people want to find out more about you, do you want to plug anything? <laughs> Well, I've got my team a little bit there. Eh? Product placement there, eh? product placement. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, obviously we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, the uh, Team Chungi, and also Noughts and Crosses, which is a pizzeria. Yeah. So we're always on there all the time, because social media now is a case of like, people. Be, it's, a, it's a way forward, basically. It really is a way forward. Um, and yeah, if you want to know what's, what we're doing regarding the business-wise on both aspects, because I'm getting questioned a lot now, when's the gym reopening? Yeah. Guys, if, if listen to TV, you'll know exactly the same time <laughs> I know. Um, and we guys are pizza here. No, we're still serving. We're still doing it. We're still working, guys. Still delivering. So, um, hope yep, you guys still know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, sure. post, we'll post links in below so that people can uh, can get onto your websites and social media. Perfect.